I really feel new. Like this is the first time that I'm really allowed to express myself as a fighter that I want to be. And it's not really dictated by anybody else, like telling me you can't do this. You've got to do this. You can only do this, which leads an athlete sometimes to feel very confused and frustrated in like the training camps and the fights. Like just imagine, I mean, I don't know if you've ever had that Chris, but let's say something was working really well for you in the gym. And they're like, but you can't do that because the odds are the percentage is it's not high enough. You know, you've got to train to beat the best. And if you're doing this and it's working against, that's only because it's working against this person and not because it's good for you or vice versa, where you aren't figuring something out. It's not working for you. And they're like, you, ha- you can only do that. You have to do that. If you don't so do that, you're going to fail. Who, you know, was, just, who was telling you these things? Who, who was in was, your head with this? It was my ex. It was Brian. Yeah. Oh, Caraway. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he, and I felt like he looked at me as a representation of him directly. And that's where a lot of his like glory and success and what would come from was my performances. So he took it personally. So he trained me as though I was him. And I feel like, um, you know, I don't want to say it was all bad. There's still like a lot of great things. I don't want to just sit here and like talk shit or whatever, because, um, truthfully, I mean, he is a great grappler, a phenomenal wrestler, you know, even goes, he's a great fighter. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things I did learn really well, but the frustrating parts for me where I think it really messed me up mentally and emotionally was the, the, um, there was no call. I feel like the confidence wasn't there in my ability. It was all about like his ability and I had to express it the way that he wanted me to. And that was just really difficult for me. You know, it was really, really challenging. So I think for the first time, like I'm really able to express myself really able to express myself as an athlete and have coaches behind me that are allowing these styles that like like, what you saw on Saturday, that is my style. That's what I've developed after time away. I came back. I'm still a strong grappler. I'm still a strong wrestler, but now I'm getting a finesse and a comfortability on my feet that I clearly never had before. I go back and look at probably my best striking performances. I would say maybe against Holly Holm or against Jessica. I, and I still, I had power, right. But I had trouble channeling it. Um, I had desire, you know, I just tried to do the head movement we worked on with GIF and, and all the footwork and stuff, but I still feel like I looked like a grappler who had some decent striking and, and Saturday, I feel like I looked at myself and I felt really well-rounded. I felt like if you just watched and you didn't know anything about me, you might've thought I was just a striker at first. Absolutely, right. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, so this is, uh, it's really fun for me to see the evolution and, and how I have evolved with so much time off. That's what's kind of crazy to me. And I think a lot of people weren't sure, you know, I, I saw the, um, the odds going into the fight and things like that. People just weren't sure. Like what was, what was, what does five years do to a person? Yeah. Is it better or worse? So for me, it, it definitely think it worked out better. <laughs> I agree. And I, I mean, I know what it's like when a coach is, you know, telling you that you may not be like, if I'm obviously a wrestler, but my goal is to feel just as comfortable on my, on my feet as I feel on the ground. And if you have a right. coach basically kind of telling you in one way or the other, that you need to be taken to this ground to the ground, because you're not that good of a striker, that's going to get in your head. And that's, you do not want to sure. go into a fight feeling, feeling insecure in any situation. You know, you want to be yeah. ready to win in every situation and then let alone, and not just being a coach, but your boyfriend at the time. I mean, that had to yeah. be super hard because like, you start a fight with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your wife or your husband. It, it's just, it's a lot. It's like the biggest strain. Like even for yeah. me, like my wife, if she's not, if she's not happy and we have an issue going on, it is in my head. Like, and yeah. that's why I like and that happy wife, practices. happy life thing. Right. Right. It affects your training too. Like if you're not able to resolve an issue before you go to the gym, which is life. I mean, sometimes we have that happen. Right. And it's just, mm-hmm. you have a shitty practice because of your personal life. That's life. But when it's, constant there's no escape and um that person is also going to the gym with you and then if you're not just fighting about like life things right um you're you're fighting about the gym it, so it was constant it was a it was never a break in, in that and it just got to the point where you know in my last fight i was just so mentally and emotionally checked out I, truthfully i hardly remember that week any of it. I don't remember the way, like the weigh-ins. It's so weird. I couldn't go back and watch videos, but, and I, and it's like, yeah, I, I know I was there, but I wasn't there. I was just gone because I was so emotionally checked out at that point. 
that I had trouble making connections with anything emotionally. You know, that should have been a great moment for me because, you know, it was the first card at Madison Square Garden, you know, Connor and uh, Eddie Alvarez are headlining and I get to be a part of that. It was, a, it yeah. should have been a very magical moment, but really I was just on autopilot. I was just going through the motions. I was smiling. I was doing my interviews. I did everything I needed to do, but I was not emotionally invested. Uh, and I, I just didn't have it left and to have anything left to be emotionally or mentally invested. And I just felt very checked out in the whole, whole process. Yeah, that sounds super suffocating. Going to the gym and having to be around them, and then going back home and having to be around them. Yeah. And I mean, and it sounds especially like just such a dominant personality. You know, he really has a very, very dominant personality, and it's very. Um, it was that's what it was. It was suffocating. There was never any time that we were ever really allowed to be apart. You know, at any point, like not even just. I mean, it was very rare that we were ever, ever, ever apart. And I think it was just part of the manipulation. Um, was so was it more like was he like a super jealous boyfriend and you just he was controlling and he didn't want you around other guys or was it because he didn't want to lose you as like a student he was your coach like was it more of the jealousy uh, as, a, as a boyfriend or more of a jealousy as a coach I mean I think there was a mixture of both um, I wouldn't say that he was a super um, insecure person in that you know if I was around to be honest, because he was always there to monitor the situation, I guess. So maybe if he hadn't been, then yes, like call, where are you? What are you doing? What's that? Sure. But it felt like I was always around him. So he always had some kind of uh, hook in, you know, if so to speak. And, um, but absolutely too, about me being the extension of him, you know, he says like, oh, I gave up my career my career for you, you know, I made all these sacrifices. And so my career didn't really go anywhere where I really feel like it was more that he didn't, he didn't want to have to put that pressure on himself. He'd rather put it on through me, still be able to take the credit. Um, I made more money too, you know, so that was something, you know, I would go and win a fight and make more money and, you know, he would spend it. And it's like, oh my uh, gosh. so it was just an awful situation. You know, he's, yeah, that was, that's his perception, you know, is that he sacrificed so much for me, but in my mind, he hated fighting. Um, he got a lot of anxiety and, um, I dealt with all those things a lot better. So for him, you know, I'm, I'm still resentful at some of the things like, you know, I wish Brian, well, I don't wish him any hard luck or anything. You know, I, I don't, um, want to harbor any negative feelings because it just doesn't, it doesn't add to like my, um, me being a more whole person moving forward. But, yeah. you know, I still, I'm not going to sit here and say like, there's no situations that still bother me. I look back and I say, you know, he was in the fight with Amanda, particularly, um, the fight with Holly, um, he would, he was just like partying. He was partying the whole time. He would be downstairs. I was trying to sleep and he would get mad at me for getting mad at him because they're being so loud that I'm like, I have to wait. I have to train tomorrow. Like my fight is in two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever. Why are you being so loud? Like, why are you partying downstairs? What are you doing? You know, that and just sucks. that kind of stuff, you know? Um, yeah, he showed up to my weight cut with Amanda late and um, intoxicated. And he brought like people with him to, and if you know about weight cutting, right? It's not a time when you're oh trying to be- Oh, hell no. You need to be possible. protected. He, especially him. He needs to, to make sure there's no random people around. Yeah, it's old like, people that love you and have your back yeah. and are there for you. If you have a random person around for your weight cut, I get super pissed off. Like, yo, yeah, I don't want like, this guy here. Saying, Why is this person here? And he wanted me to be like personable to them because they were some, you know, basketball stars, I guess, or whatnot. But I just didn't because it was international fight week. So he went to the fights before my fight. Right. So I fought Saturday and there was fights Friday. So he went, he was like, can I go? And I'm like, in my mind, I was kind of like, please I'm like go and stay. Cause he really so you wasn't were checked out at that point. Well, at what point? And, and I don't mean, I just think, I appreciate you being so honest and open about your relationship. And I think it's, awesome that you're doing it because I think it could help a lot of, a lot of people. Cause I, I think relationships are one of those things. Everyone feels like they're on their own and it's their relationship is different and no one really understands. Right. So I think hearing you going through this situation is probably going to really warm people up and give them a little bit more confidence that they're not alone. So I appreciate you, right. you, you know, really well, opening yeah. up about this stuff. Yeah. And, and I, I, I tread really lightly, like a lot of this stuff I actually haven't said before because, um, because I don't want to, um, I don't want to put 
put Brian down and I know that he's still like our relationship was somewhat in or was at the time in the limelight and you know he's still somebody knows like I don't I hesitate because like I said I don't wish ill will or bad things for him I want him to be happy like and move on and grow as a person but you know these are true things that really happened and I think in order for me to really heal and shed some light on the differences of why I think I'm more successful now and that where the changes of where I'm at is like is to be honest and really be able to reflect on these things candidly and um as much as I still feel like I protect Brian in a way you know by Mm. not um saying the truth like I still hold back a lot I mean there's still a lot that I could elaborate on but I, Go ahead, but, open up. This is the uh, I know, right? podcast. <laughs> but, uh, no one Dr. Phil's. Me, right? Just between you <laughs> yeah, and I. Just us. <laughs> but, but truthfully, I think that it is important, you know, Chris, the more that I realize that my story has impacted other people, we've all been in difficult relationships or maybe had trouble leaving. And I just want people to know that I'm not any different because sometimes I think people look at me or maybe look at fighters in general, that we have something special or something that someone else doesn't. And I really want to bring it back down to like a human level. Like we're all people at the end of the day. And like, even somebody that you think might never have an issue or is strong or empowered or whatnot, like we do, I had trouble leaving a relationship. It took me a good four to five years. So that's what I was going to ask you. When did it start getting toxic to where like, this is affecting me in my, in my, in every part of my life? from the very from the very beginning to be honest mm. it was the very beginning my first fight so he's always been a very high could you not break out with him or was he just tough to break out with yeah so i knew i really wanted to break up with him I, like i had given up i was checked out of the relationship probably four or five years before i actually did and we were together for about nine mm. um but i had tried and obviously um th- there were manipulation tactics like um physically barricading me in a room like not allowing me to leave at that time um or uh you know threatening harm to himself which is one of the scariest things um because you know when you still love and care about someone and at that point you know it wasn't that I didn't care about Brian I was just so tired of being under that kind of duress I wanted him to go and be happy So I didn't wish anything bad, but I wanted to, I wanted to leave. And so what I guess I chose to do was to hurt myself instead of hurt him every time, because I was convincing myself I could handle it. It's like, I can handle it. It's not so, it's not so bad. Like I can deal with it. You know, there are still good things, right? You try to, you just end up convincing yourself in whatever way that you need to, you, you hold on to the small fleeting moments that are really good. And you just try to out- overlook all the things that are toxic and telling you that you shouldn't be there, that you're not happy, you know, depression, all these things. Like, you know, you just can convince yourself that you'll be okay and that it's going to be better. And that every time, right. I'll, I'm going to change. I'm going to this, let's take some, you know, if you need space, and, but then it's just all goes right back to the way that it was. And you find yourself again, back in that hole and it's like why do I keep putting myself here you know and it just took me a really long time to finally you know get that so um we actually separated almost immediately after the fight with Amanda because so you you retire and then so no I separated oh after Amanda I'm sorry Amanda yeah excuse me and then um and then I fought one more time I fought Raquel so we tried to do just a coach uh athlete thing and have more space and allow me to be single and independent the whole time even though he promised and swore he wouldn't you know was just trying to manipulate to get back in so that's what that whole camp was like was just (sighs) me battling to keep him uh in one place and that was like you give an inch take a mile kind of thing so it was just a constant fight that whole camp um it was it was brutal so um but i was i was definitely staunch on like I did not want to get back with him and um so then anyways when I fought then I fought Raquel and that was just as much of a nightmare you know even though we weren't in personally we weren't in a relationship but we could not manage otherwise and and I just was he in your corner for that or yeah he was oh my god you're crazy you can't get away from oh my god I endured I'm I'm like sick to my stomach for you right now oh my god I can't believe what you went through um it was tough what were you gonna keep going i'm sorry no so 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 realistically we were separated um 
in July. I fought one last time in November, tried to kind of make it all work in a, a way, like taking some steps back, but it just was, it was not good. So um, I just felt, felt like the sport and the relationship were too entangled. Like I couldn't separate from one and not the other. So or I didn't know how to like, and I knew that he wouldn't like let that be possible, you know? Yeah. So I had to just basically like, I'm retiring and that's it. And I mean, like they released footage now and I even forgot about that, but like the arguing in the octagon afterwards. And that was because I, I just knew I had a better me to offer than what I was putting forward in the octagon. And it was really frustrating to know that there was just so much taking away but even at that time like I wasn't quite able to figure all that out I just knew I didn't like that the place that I was in and I needed to change it so that was the main reason why I retired thanks for watching today's episode if you enjoyed it please let us know in the comments below won't back down is also available as a podcast so feel free to give us a follow wherever you get your podcasts